And now, live from the Tanzu TV studios, it's Tanzu Tuesdays with your host, Robert Burley. Accidentally call me Tasha. Paul. He accidentally uh, called I... you Tasha. Okay. Yeah. I knew who I meant. <laughs> hey, we're live. We're live. Are we live? Pew, pew, pew. Weep, sh- weep, beep, boop, beep. I had to make up for last lasers! week's lack of, of lasers and played in the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to me. I was, I was so sad to miss you all. Uh, I was, as they were saying, literally driving back from camping. And so uh, it was nice to get out of the house and still only be with the family. Is there a way to just leave the family there? No, that's not a thing. Is that a thing? No, that's, that's not, not a thing. thing. Oh, it's okay. probably it's probably a thing that you just don't want to do. Right. Oh, right. No. Yes, my I do need my coworkers. I do. I do need my coworkers. That's how you say it. All right. <laughs> well, welcome everyone. These coworkers Thanks. missed you. Aww. I did miss you too. And also, I I was uh, telling them a little earlier. Um, I listened to the beginning part, and all of the all of the uh, the uh, the the joshing the, the the getting making fun of me was was funny and warranted i was laughing out loud i was lol so well played and uh, i did try and snake ryan baxter by by pinging him on sunday uh <laughs> so actually I, I was like i better ping him now because i'm not gonna have anything to to any cell service but anyway we're on today with dave deeriff uh, who is part of the uh, .NET Steel Toe team with VMware, uh, brought over. Uh, Hola. Yeah, so welcome. Welcome, sir. How are you? I'm great. How are you guys? Uh, I'm fine. Tiffany, how I'm, are you? Uh, looking it's forward to... It's not too to... high here, sunny. Oh, good. Is it raining? In Seattle? No, it's, it is definitely sunny. Blue skies. I don't actually see any clouds. Every person I talk to that's in Seattle... That has to be my first question because I feel like I have a pretty good chance of being right. Yeah, you've got like a. If it's the summer, chance. you have a very good chance of being wrong. Oh, well, and that's the, that's when people go visit Seattle and they go, "It's so beautiful here. Mm-hmm. It's just gorgeous." Like a solid and, week. Yep, yeah, and they totally convince you that it's supposed to be like that all the time, and then you mm-hmm. there and it's like dark at three thirty p.m. and it's been raining all day. Well, I, I have a coworker who also lives in Seattle uh, on my team, and. Uh, he was telling us over the weekend they went to the beach, and I said that's uh, unexpected. And he was like, "Well, we're in hoodies and uh, and jeans yeah. on the beach." It's a San Francisco <laughs> beach experience too. San Francisco is cold beaches as well. It's like a whole other level of sand getting everywhere. Right? Like, <laughs> yes, yeah, because it's up in your and eyes and jeans yeah. on the beach. Like, <laughs> wow, that's that's friction. I don't even. Nope. I don't even think about that. No, thank you. <laughs> As opposed to Paul's beach, which obviously he has to drive for, but it's like getting in a bath. That's water so warm. It is, yes. Speaking of warm, it is right at 100 degrees right here, right now. But what's and the humidity? Ew. I walked past my uh, barbecue and it was saying it was 150 degrees inside my barbecue. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and nothing going on inside of it. So. Right. Low and slow. Like, yeah, low, real low and real slow. Today's high is 79 here. Yeah, it's uh, 74 according to. It's Apple. kind of the, the extremes there, Seattle and Texas. That, that's, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I have not gone to the beach. I was near enough to like one of the one, like Golden Gardens, and the number of cars was an automatic nope for me. Yeah, that's the other thing. Just like Portland, as soon as it's a sunny, nice day, everybody's out. And so that's the other thing you got to battle. Yeah, which is especially a problem nowadays. Yes, because everybody needs to be distant. Correct. People are scary. Right? You're like, if they, if they weren't scary enough before, right? They're, they're real scary, scary now. <laughs> no, I mean, if you if you think about it, I, I'm so for most of my life I've been a developer, and quite frankly, for most of my life, I've stayed away from people just on general principle. Like, I want to be in my cave, and I'm pretty good in my cave. This quarantine thing is pretty great. That's right. It's like, <laughs> it's like nobody wants to be around anybody. So I'm like, 
uh, this is this is good for me. The only it's problem good. is, is when the introverts are so used to having their own space and now you've got to share it with everybody else because they normally Ooh, leave. True. You and you're like, what are you yeah. going to get out of here? You know, there's so. also hundreds of thousands of people dying, but as long as it's good for you. Well, you OK, know. I'm sorry. I, yeah. Ba -da -ba -ba -da <laughs> like I literally am like on a walk and somebody will be like decently far away and I'm like oh they're on my side of the street or on my side of the sidewalk I'm going over there yeah. run gotta, gotta be safe just be safe well on all of that note uh we're excited to have you Dave because uh you're now can I call you Dave or is it David I know that your thing says whatever or David. all right David yes that's true too yes um anyway so yeah we're excited because we have yet to have a single steel toe top we have a lot of spring some spring boot and so it'll be fun to uh share with people that don't even know what steel toe project is and if you, you know hopefully you're going to be able to give us a little bit of a background of how it kind of came into be and it's um, you it's got exciting. a whole lot coming at you I'm yeah good wondering. i'm excited definitely curious about the naming <laughs> yeah i, I actually uh, that... Stein's <laughs> interpretation so i'd like to hear dave's so that uh, actually steel toe is uh, the naming um, there. There is a short list of, uh, of some X pivots that know the origins of that naming. Uh, we leave that as a myth. There is no explanation. For that. <laughs> it's, it's for, well, I just always thought like spring boot, steel toe shoe. So somehow it kind of was related in that. That's way. that's yeah. We can go with that. That was but again, uh, that's similar to uh Similar to how Bosch got its name, if you've mm -hmm. ever gone back and looked at the origins of that, uh, it's it's you've got to get the explanation because it's out of left field. Right. <laughs> well, good. Um, I feel like there's something else I wanted to share, but I've been I, I, we got uh, upcoming uh, events. Oh yes, upcoming events. I was like, we got into the weather. Uh, ah, Spencer Gibb. Hello, sir. A steel toe boot. There he goes. See, he's even got the same thing as me. So yes, uh, quickly to remind everyone, September 2nd and 3rd, we've got the Spring One Mega Conference coming up, all virtual, all online, all free. Go to springone.io and you can register right now. Uh, yours truly has been asked to MC a track. Um, and so I will be emceeing a track. And uh, Paul and me too. And Paul, yeah. So uh, it's it's exciting that we're all going to be able to, to take this and share it with you again in a whole greater, grander venue. Uh, there's also going to be some social tracks that you can go to. Uh, that's all being lined up. Uh, I particularly am close to one of the shows called Speechless that'll be showing. And so that'll be great. And uh, looking forward to all the excellent materials. You can go online and check out all the different uh, talks and you can kind of map out what you want. And of course, they'll all be recorded. And so, oops, I have a coworker who's loose. Yes? <laughs> when the light turns green, you can get up. Yeah. Okay, good night. And so, coworkers, they, you know, they need to take naps too. That's a thing. Your negotiation skills are getting quite good. <laughs> it's all I've got. <laughs> if I can't figure out negotiating, it's going to be hitting my head against the wall. Um, and then we're going to go to VMworld, VMworld, go to vmworld.com, and that's happening September 29th through October 1st. Paul will be uh, sharing his love in that uh, three-day fest. So go to VMworld, again, all free, on online. I've got another coworker. Okay, go potty. If you got to go potty, just go. You don't really have to tell me, but thank you. That's the yes. kind of stern you can get yourself in trouble by saying that, by the way. <laughs> right, because she's one who is potty trained, so she would. <laughs> okay, I'm going. Um, and then we have Spring One Tour. Uh, so if you go to springonetour.io, um, we've got a, a schedule change. So if you go there right now, it says our lovely Spencer Gibb, who's on right now watching. Okay, go potty, buddy. Uh, and Nate Shuda, uh, but sadly, that's not happening. They had to do something else, and so we are going to have Michael Manella. Come on, he's going to talk about streams, batches, and microservices. Oh my! So that'll be updated, but you can still register at springontour.io, and that's August 19th and the 20th. Uh, and then I felt like there was one more thing, but maybe that's it. Oh, I have something. What? Oh. What? what? Our, our good friend and colleague and co-worker, uh, Michael Cote, he is Who's now on vacation. 
he, he's now he is on vacation. Yes, <laughs> uh, but he is streaming his podcast Tanzu Talk on I forgot what day on our Twitch channel now, and so we're still Ooh, working on oh, the. It's on here now. Still working on the calendar setup and stuff, and he did his first trial run last week that went pretty well. I think we've got the video for that up on YouTube already, uh, and I'm. I'm not sure if he's doing one this week because he is indeed on vacation. Uh, our European friends do take their vacations very seriously. So weird. So weird. Uh, so probably the following week, um, we should see him again. And I will endeavor to actually have the details so I don't sound like a blithering idiot. Too so, late! <laughs> so is it podcasty in the sense that it doesn't actually have video or is it actually just a video oh, no, he has video and they were even doing Is that some a whiteboarding where it turns into a podcast if it's okay. it so he, to, he edits a podcast he edits it down into a podcast yeah but from what i saw of the last one they were doing some whiteboarding and everything cool we love kote we love that guy he's all right okay i will speak for myself i love kote i love that guy uh, yes, thank you for bringing that up. And again, if you want to watch any of our past shows, which we now have like 16 of them or so, 17, I don't know. That's right. Uh, you can go to youtube.com uh, and then look up a VMware Tanzu. And we have so our, your best bet is go to, to tanzu.tv yeah. and you will see the listing of our episodes as well as the Spring One Tour episodes. And I think we even have all of the Spring One Live conference from earlier this year up oh, there wow. as well. Great. And we will hopefully have Cote's podcast videos. So content. Content. Whew. Excellent. Well, good. I, okay. I think we got all the housekeeping stuff out of the way. Uh, I see uh, Java Grunt is, uh, is online. And so since you're doing this, I was going to ping you later, but can you please send me your abstract and your title and your headshot and bio? And we'll get that up because you're up next week, brother. I can't wait. I'm excited. I'm excited for uh, Deshaun to, to share his stuff with us. Miss seeing him out on the road. So it'll be fun to see you virtually, my friend. And, um, and that's it. So without any further ado, Dave, Diriff, are you ready? I'm ready. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome. Uh, so I will share. I'm going to go take care of the bathroom situation with the co-workers. <laughs> I'm going on video for that. Bye. I'll be right back. <laughs> Paul, are we good for the uh, screen share? Yep. All cool. Good. All right. So um, <clears throat> before I start, uh, to everybody out there listening, uh, please, please, please ask any questions along the way. Uh, I believe my um, friends here on the uh, uh, channel are watching that and uh, you guys just butt in whenever somebody asks a question. Um, I would rather kind of be in the moment talking about something in the context and, you know, help somebody understand something better than uh, we can wait to the end. That's fine. But, you know, just better to answer it in the moment. Cool. All right. Welcome. We're going to talk about the uh, greatest runtime ever made on the face of the planet. That would be the .NET runtime. Uh, <laughs> and uh, with that, uh, one of the greatest microservice frameworks to ever be created, that is the Steel Toe framework. Now you may be asking yourself, uh, what is uh, Steel Toe? Uh, <clears throat> the project was created in 2015 uh, at uh, formerly known as Pivotal. Um, Basically, the project started as uh, we want to use Spring Cloud for .NET. That was the, the premise of it. Uh, obviously, it, it's grown tremendously over the years, but uh, that's where it came from. And you'll find, definitely find strong hints of uh, Spring Cloud services, all the different Spring Cloud components uh, throughout uh, the Steel Toe framework. Uh, in 2017, we donated the project uh, to the .NET Foundation uh, to make it completely open source and completely community driven. So it is no longer owned uh, by VMware, Tanzu, any of that. Uh, similar to Spring, we have a very uh, sizable developer team uh, that is contributing uh, to the project, but it is definitely 100% community driven, has uh, no 
uh, real product ties uh, inside uh, VMware uh, Tanzu. Um, <clears throat> why am I using steel toe? Uh, so the .NET runtime uh, and you know, C Sharp in general, uh, they're good. And they've got a lot of great stuff built into them. Uh, notably .NET Core, you know, the, 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 the now stuff and the future stuff. Uh, has a lot of stuff built into it for building uh, microservices, console apps, uh, distributable libraries, all kinds of stuff. Um, the thing is, you know, when you get over to the microservice side of things, we can narrow this down a little bit. We can put a little bit of opinion on things because we know the environment that these microservices are going to be running in. We know how they should be hosted. We know how they should be possibly distributed. Uh, and we know what kind of session or lack of uh, they should be carrying. So because of that, we can really kind of get a little more granular and uh, make these uh, a little bit better. And in making them a little bit better, uh, you're probably going to uh, first go for making a developer's life easier, right? As they're creating the microservices. And to make a developer's life easier, first thing you can do is take away the boilerplate stuff. Uh, so <clears throat> when we're talking about taking away the boilerplate stuff, we're talking about taking uh, ASP.NET, right? Those capabilities. So like in ASP.NET Core, you have a very nice logging framework in there. You have a configuration uh, framework. You have a hierarchy of uh, configuration values that you can apply. They really did some really great stuff in there. But we can go further with that when we're specifically talking about uh, microservices. Now, I use the word framework. And in .NET world, uh, the framework, it means all kinds of fun things. You have, you could possibly call it the .NET framework. Uh, well, you could call it the .NET framework. That's what it was before. Uh, now we have .NET Core. You could call it uh, the uh, uh, just a general programming framework. Anyway, the, this is a common question that I get, and that is, is Steel Toe trying to replace .NET? Because uh, that's, you know, when you start describing this on slides, it kind of feels like that sometimes. And I can give you an emphatic no, 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 no. We are not. We are building on top of, we are extending uh, the .NET. .NET uh, framework uh, was previously what it is. Now we moved on to .NET Core, but absolutely not. Are we going to replace uh, .NET or the runtime in any ways? We're going to extend it. And in fact, we're going to extend it in a way that developers can continue to extend the extension, uh, if you will. Um, but we are absolutely 100% enjoying and uh, uh, benefiting from all the great work that uh, Microsoft has uh, uh, put together. Okay, I'm gonna switch over here. Uh, before we get into kind of all the, what can we do with this kind of stuff? I just wanna give you a uh, feel for what this is. Uh, and <clears throat> really I, I want to be as transparent and open as possible about what this is and how a developer would use it, or implement it. Uh, and, and because this is a uh, Tanzu uh, uh, channel, um, I'm betting that there are probably some Spring folks out there uh, listening to this. And so I wanna show you uh, some, some very common similarities, some, some very common uh, habits that were brought over from the Spring world into .NET uh, with Steel Toe. So I'm gonna start from the absolute nothing. You, you just can't get any more simple than this. Uh, we're going to do a uh, ASP.NET Core uh, web API project. This would be the same as doing a .NET new a uh, web API if you're using the CLI instead of uh, Visual Studio. Um, I'll let the names carry. No big deal, web application. Just for ease of uh, uh, demo here, I'm going to turn off HTTPS. Uh, we are creating an API, so we're going to get a little uh, demo uh, endpoint created for our uh, application. Today, LTS is uh, .NET Core 3.1, so that's what we'll uh, stick with. <clears throat> so the weather forecast API, uh, that's what we've got here. Um, pretty straightforward uh, application. Again, I, I'm, I'm, I wore short sleeves, so you can see there's no tricks up my sleeves. Uh, this is uh, straight up just a little simple API application. Uh, so now that we have our uh, application going, uh, first step is we're going to bring in a couple of uh, essential uh, packages for uh, 
uh, seal toe. So we're gonna head over to uh, NuGet, we're gonna browse, and we're gonna look for three, three packages here. Uh, the first one is called Endpoint Core. Uh, let's go ahead and add that into our application. Um, and then we're going to add dynamic logger uh, in here. And I am going to touch on each of these packages and why I'm specifically choosing these. Uh, the Steel Toe Framework, if you visit the site and look at the documentation, you will find a heck of a lot more packages, a heck of a lot more components. So um, why are we choosing these three out of all of them? Well, <clears throat> the, the, a lot of the components within uh, Steel Toe are pretty specific to a certain cloud pattern, a certain way of doing things. Uh, I want to implement service discovery. I want to connect to this type of data store. So I want to use a cloud connector, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so that's really specific to, you know, what that microservice is and what it's going to do. But there are some fundamentals that we consider essential for every single microservice in the world, right? Things that every single one of them must do. And uh, the short list for us is reporting its health, uh, reporting some amount of information about uh, the application itself, version number, that sort of thing. Uh, being able to stream logs very easily and in a structured way uh, to its platform. Uh, and then also uh, being able to put some sort of tracing context, uh, distributed tracing context behind those log messages. So I can take that span ID and I can possibly go over to my uh, tracing system, Zipkin or whatever, and I can look it up and see what's going on uh, if the two aren't automatically connected anyway. So <clears throat> those three uh, uh, where we uh, are going to add the capability of those three, health endpoint, info endpoint, and uh, the loggers with, with uh, distributed tracing or spans uh, tagged to them. We're going to add those three in, right? But we're going to write four lines of code to do it. And here's the idea. Uh, here's the amazing thing, whoops, with uh, uh, steel toe. Uh, so I'm going to add in uh, some uh, statements here into my <coughs> host builder uh, for my application. Add health actuator, add info actuator, add loggers. Uh, if you're from, from the spring world, this would be very similar to doing an annotation uh, for uh, just adding uh, actuators in, right? That's a very common word. The idea is <coughs> a developer shouldn't have to deal with this stuff. Right? They should just be able to get help. And in fact, .NET Core already has health reporting, a pretty nice health reporting system built in. But the thing is, health reporting itself, you need to be able to accumulate up the result of a bunch of different health checks into a single answer. And that is an HTTP answer. And then you need to build an endpoint to respond to that. But if you have to go in and build that in for every single microservice you have, uh, this is going to get unwieldy. And you're going to have a lot of extra code that you're dealing with, a lot of code that, quite frankly, your, your, your business really isn't benefiting from. I mean, your app's got to be up and running, but I mean, come on. You want to get to the business side of things. You want to get to the, the, the logic of actually making your microservices, what they're the point of them. So let's just get past this stuff. And, and this is where uh, Steel Toe really helps you is through this uh, kind of boilerplate stuff. So this just gave me uh, some functionality, quite a bit actually, with those three. Uh, I'm gonna head over to startup and in the uh, services container, <clears throat> I'm going to add in uh, distributed tracing. And because we imported those three packages, uh, Visual Studio finds my using statement, thank you. And now I have distributed tracing. So what did this give me, distributed tracing? Uh, and by the way, Steel Toe, as I said before, is completely open source, right? So what is happening under the covers here? You can have all of the C-sharp for this, absolutely all the C-sharp for this. Um, but under the covers, uh, the Steel Toe team is uh, kind of partnered with helping the uh, Open Telemetry project. And the Open Telemetry project covers many different runtimes. Uh, and, and the Steel Toe team has helped develop the C-sharp client for Open Telemetry. 
And so open telemetry is a uh, open set of standards for how an application emits its metrics and you know, general information. And one of those things that it does is how is a uh, trace, uh, sorry, how is a span created? How is a trace uh, created or defined? And so the steel toe project follows all that rules and actually has um, the package that I brought in has uh, uh, open telemetry included in it and is now gonna do that for you. All of your endpoints, all of your HTTP actions, incoming, outgoing, that sort of thing, by doing this single line, uh, Steel Toe is now uh, helping to watch all of that uh, going on. Pretty simple. Boilerplate kind of stuff, stuff that every single microservice should have, but stuff that I don't want to take the time to deal with. All right, so that's it. That's, our, uh, uh, that's all the packages we're going to bring in. <clears throat> I'm going to go over into our controller and add one more fun thing just so we have a little bit of uh, context. And that is we are going to log uh, information and it's going to say hi there. Uh, and we want to write this log. I want to write this log message for a reason because I want to see the distributed tracing, the spans and everything tagged to the message. But I haven't done anything. And no tricks up my sleeves here. All I did was write a message straight up with the iLogger system. This is all .NET Core uh, stuff. So uh, let's do a little F5. We're going to run our application. Good. So <clears throat> that's our uh, weather forecast uh, running along there just fine. Thank you. Uh, now, look at this address that I'm typing in slash actuator slash health, right? I don't have, let's go back over here real quick. I don't have a controller in here, actuator health. I didn't code anything in here. Uh, Steel Toad did this for me, right? Uh, you can customize this, right? I've just added in the default stuff. You can go in app settings, Jason, and customize all this stuff to, the, to your teeth. Uh, all of it. I'm just going with the defaults because I want to show you the, the, the super simple way. Uh, so actuator is the default word here used. Uh, slash health. So now I have uh, an endpoint that is reporting in a very structured way to whatever, my platform, uh, Prometheus scraping things, I don't care. Whatever it needs to know, your application is healthy. Uh, it's reporting it in a couple of different ways. It's all the same message, but status up, this is a message mostly uh, that came from Cloud Foundry and uh, helps Cloud Foundry, uh, Bosch, know that this application is uh, up and running. The basics out of the box for Steel Toe, they're gonna look at the uh, disk uh, for your application. So here's how much you have uh, total, here's how much you have free, uh, and here's your threshold. Uh, for it, so it's just gonna give you some basic information. You can add a heck of a lot of other stuff in here uh, that's, that's a part of making the health decision. Uh, um, is, there, is my database connection good? Uh, do I have a message queue going? Uh, is my configuration provider there uh, and responding? All of these things uh, can all be accumulated up into here to a yes or no. Uh, a new one is the uh, liveliness and readiness probes. Uh, so this is a Kubernetes thing, right? Uh, Kubernetes is going to look at this endpoint and decide whether your application, your pod, is uh, uh, healthy or not. And then we'll decide to recycle it or not according to that. <clears throat> if you don't do these things, then you're probably just going to be, the health is going to be gauged on whether the uh, app is uh, pinging uh, or you know, available on its port. And we all know that that's not really the answer, right? Your app's not healthy just because it's pinging. It, it's running, it's responding, it's got a web server uh, on it. That's a healthy app doing that. Uh, so another endpoint I'm gonna go to, uh, and gosh, this is uh, a lot of information. So uh, we're gonna make this a little bit clearer. I don't necessarily wanna drill in on all the uh, fun bits and pieces of it. But what I want to show you is, um, which we need to uh, zoom in here a little bit. What I want to show you is the richness of information happening here. Um, 
Well, I can't, but okay. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, the key thing is slash actuator slash info. And all of this information in here, it's major version, minor version, patch version, build version, uh, file descriptor, uh, the different uh, states that the application could be in. Uh, all of these things, Steel Toe knows how to read out of a, a .NET application. So I don't have to do anything. It knows how to look at your uh, CS proj and get all the uh, meaningful information out of there and your build information uh, and your project uh, properties. Uh, it knows how to get all that stuff out of there and respond to it. So now I can get this information anytime I want about what is my microservice doing? What version is it running? What DLLs are it using? What version of Steel Toe is it on? You can build in other things here beyond just, just Steel Toe uh, to tell me what's going on. I don't have to go in and look at anything. Don't have to look at code. Don't have to compare, well, this is prod and this is staging and this is what I got on my desktop and all that. I can just hit this endpoint and get some pretty darn valuable information quickly about uh, what's going on. So one last thing I'm gonna go over to uh, with the application, uh, we had added, uh, I was professing about distributed tracing and such. And uh, in fact, I'm going to grab these logs. I'm going to not open up that, but I want to bring this up and show you um, exactly what we're looking at. Uh, sorry for the shifting around the screens, but I want you to be able to read this. The last line is what I'm looking at here. And this is, there's my hi there, right? We logged that message. But look at this, Steel Toe added on the name of the application that we're coming from. So that would be the instance ID, the trace ID, and the span ID. That was using the open telemetry stuff to generate these things. These are very meaningful because now, if my application is also reporting its span information to Zipkin or some other uh, Zipkin you know, compatible system, which a lot of them are, uh, uh, Wavefront, you know, those kinds of things, uh, I can take this ID and go over in there and search on it, and it means something. And I know what application my log is being written from, right? Consider this was being written out to Docker, which then made it out to your platform, which then made it out somewhere else, piped somewhere else you lose context of what's going on. And you can't do that. But to code all this in to keep the context, that's just wasted time for the developer to do that stuff. Uh, and so that's where Steel Toe comes in. And remember to uh, get that, we added in that. That was it. Okay, I'm gonna take a pause for a minute. Are you guys still out there? Bob, Tiffany, Paul, have I put you to sleep? Yep, we're uh, still here, or at least I'm still here. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, no, I'm, I'm, ba I'm back, but I actually hear the coworkers now talking some more. So, well, this has been great. This has been really great so far. Thank you. I, let me just check the Twitch page. Has there been any questions? Nope, no questions yet. So everybody's doing great. Cool. You may proceed. All right, cool. So, okay. Take a checkpoint here, and uh, you know this. That was the basics. It's not super sexy, I know, but again, it is needed uh, for for most applications. Uh, now, let's kind of go beyond that of just the basics and get into the to the more uh, sexy side of uh, Steel Toe. Um, so there are kind of four general areas that I, I, I want you to focus on or think about uh, when you're thinking about Steel Toe, or frankly, when you're thinking about just building microservices or .NET microservices um, with it. Um, first of all, uh, quickly deliver features that are independently evolv evolvable microservices. So each component is extensible. Uh, it is an open source project. You can take all the source code. You can make it if you're your own, if you'd like. Everything is, bit, is built to production grade, right? There is nothing that's gonna go GA in this project. We've been doing it since 2015. Trust me, there are a heck of a lot of .NET microservices with Steel Toe in them running in some very notable uh, companies and uh, uh, applications. Nothing is going to be GA in the Steel Toe framework that is not uh, bulletproof and uh, production ready for it. You, it's a, it's 
just part of the deal. The, the testing that goes through their pipelines, I've seen them, uh, their definitions for their pipelines and all that, and it is massive, uh, the testing that these things go through. Um, <clears throat> so also uh, the distributed nature of microservices, right? We need to uh, be able to bring in all these other services and things around our application and they become dependencies, uh, configuration, circuit, uh, uh, circuit breaking, uh, monitoring, you know, uh, observability, that sort of thing. We need all these things around our application, but we don't need to spend a lot of time writing code for them because it's, it's, you just need to get into the business logic. You need to be getting into the stuff, the reason that the microservice exists. Uh, <clears throat> you've got all these services around you, right? And portability is a pretty big deal here because you're gonna develop your microservices locally. Uh, I use Visual Studio, I've got Docker running. Uh, so I can spin up a, a service registry pretty quickly. And in fact, the service registry that I'm gonna use is exactly what's running in production. And the configuration that it's using is basically the same. Uh, you're never gonna get it you know, perfect because you're probably running on very different networks uh, between production and development, but you get it close enough and you can run your application, you can pass its test, you can do everything locally and in the cloud and create that uh, parity between environments, create that portability uh, for all these different uh, components that you might be using. Uh, <clears throat> this is, uh, as you can see, Steel Toe is very, very focused on the developer, uh, getting them away from all the boilerplate stuff, uh, but also making the applications very cloud centric. Uh, making them very cloud native. Uh, you know, they're, they're, as, you, as you go along in your cloud journey, you start out by maybe just creating a microservice and you get into containerization, right? And then after containerization, then you get into external services and you play with environment variables and that sort of thing. And then your external services becomes two services and three services and you get into external configurations and stuff like this. You're moving up the chart. You're becoming... Uh, more and more that cloud native rock star uh, as you move along. And so Steel Toe wants to help you get away from all the boilerplate stuff. Uh, so we've created a uh, project, if you're familiar with Spring, uh, we created the uh, Steel Toe Initializer. Uh, it is dead the same as Spring Initializer. Start.steeltoe.io, uh, we'll have that uh, URL up in just a minute. And uh, you can go in and generate a web API project, just like doing .NET new web API. But then you can just go down the list and say, I want cloud connectors. I want a SQL database. I want external uh, uh, configuration. I want service discovery. I want this and that. Check, 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 generate. And it will give you back a zip with a fully ready to go Visual Studio project with all of these dependencies baked in, tested, ready to go uh, for you. That's pretty awesome. Uh, that project is going along quite well and. Um, uh, is really gained a lot of traction. And then my last one, my fourth uh, uh, slide here is event-driven. So uh, this is kind of the uh, new and up and coming kid here. Uh, Steel Toe 3.0 is going to be uh, released to the world in about two weeks uh, from today, uh, very close to the day. Um, and in 3.0, we're going to introduce uh, Steel Toe messaging. Uh, that will then carry into Steel Toe Streams. So the idea is to, th this is kind of the next level of microservices, is getting into message buses. And my application, my service never talks to another service. It puts its uh, a message on a bus, and then somebody else is watching that bus, that topic, and I uh, subscribe to it and gets notified of it. And then they go do something with it. And then they put a message on the bus. And it's you know, just this constant exchange of uh, messaging uh, back and forth. Okay, well, that's all fine and well, but there is a heck of a lot of code behind just being able to send a message to a bus and reasonably uh, take it to production, right? Make it resilient, make it, uh, my new world is durable. Uh, uh, you know, make it production ready, like truly production ready. And by the time you look at everything that you've got to do to create this whole messaging uh, uh, framework, it's like, okay, my services can just talk to one another. Forget it. I, I forget about the, the rest. So anyway, the, uh, the steel toe messaging 
uh, aims to solve that. Uh, they've actually gone in, they've started with uh, Rabbit uh, as the first uh, um, uh, client. And so they've implemented full compatibility, full feature parity with uh, Spring messaging and with the RabbitMQ.net uh, uh, client. And in fact, they helped the project build it out a little bit more and do some more things in there. But this is, I've seen demos of this happen and it's like, I just go into my .NET Core microservice, I add an attribute and say, I wanna use Rabbit messaging. Here's where I should be uh, looking. Uh, here's the queue that I should be looking for. Here's the queue I should be sending my messages to, go. I mean, it is mind blowing uh, doing this and it takes event driven, it takes the possibilities there, man, a whole new level. Uh, the stream side of it, uh, so that gets into uh, things like Spring Cloud Dataflow. Uh, so now, you know, I don't want to have to code in specifics to the message queue that I'm using, Kafka, Rabbit, you know, those sorts of things. I don't want to code anything proprietary like that in. So SteelToe can help you abstract that away with streams and just say, send a message. And in my configuration, I said, I want to use Rabbit. Right, but my code just says send a message. Uh, and then everything else is decided for and managed for me uh, through that uh, steel toe package. All right, moving along. This is a lot. I hope you're uh, sticking with me. I guess we're recording it, so uh, you can always come back and pause it. I tend to be a fast talker. Uh, so not only are we talking about steel toe 3.0, and we're talking about all this uh, next level stuff, but we, the team also has a uh, project going with Azure. Uh, so that is a project called Azure Spring Cloud. So you may or may not have seen this. This is, uh, this is a thing right now for Java, uh, Azure Spring Cloud. It is uh, today, I, I believe it's in its final stretch of public preview uh, and it is slated to go GA very, very soon. Um, and so this is managed uh, Spring Cloud. This is discovery, config server, observability with uh, app monitoring. Uh, and I, I believe they've uh, built in tracing and, and uh, logging features and some other things in there as well since, since this slide's been made. But the idea is I just tell Azure, give me all this. And Azure spins everything up, reports back some addressing to you. You give Azure your application bits and it makes it routable. There you go. Uh, it connects everything up. Uh, on the Java side, that's the thing right now. On the .NET side, uh, I've seen it go. It's in uh, private preview right now, or limited private preview, but uh, we'll be following pretty quickly uh, from the Java side. So I'd say Q1, Q2 of uh, 2021. Um, uh, we're going to see Azure Spring Cloud for .NET. This is a very cool one. Uh, uh, you get a pretty darn rich uh, cloud environment with very, very little effort and very, very low cost uh, for what you're getting uh, for your application deployed. Okay, you've almost made it. Congratulations, you're almost got rid of me. Uh, one last thing is uh, let's just talk about getting started. Hopefully I've uh, piqued your interest in Steel Toe, maybe even .NET. Uh, I hope I have and uh, I hope I can help. Uh, in uh, any way to uh, get you more interested and get your hands on uh, with this stuff. So if you head over to steeltoe.io, uh, we've got all kinds of getting started guides, learning more, documentation to your heart's content, all that fun stuff there. Uh, we also have some uh, training courses. Uh, you can sign up for those off of Steeltoe's website uh, for taking the certified .NET developer, as well as the acceleration lab. Uh, in fact, I've done these and uh, they're pretty darn cool. Uh, it's a, one of these is a four day course and uh, man, there's a heck of a lot of learning in there, but you leave a rock star. Uh, you leave understanding steel toe and microservices and just generally .NET on a whole nother level uh, going through the training. Uh, and then finally support, um, you know, you can, the, the team tries to make themselves available. I try to make myself available uh, in kind of all different media outlets. So Slack is number one. You can get directly to the programmers uh, on Slack, uh, GitHub. Uh, that's where we live. Uh, you can open up issues. You can ask questions, you know, all that good stuff. Everything's distributed through Nougat. 
Um, you can go in there and search around if you'd like. Uh, that's a quite an involved one. Uh, and then you can also, uh, you know, go on Twitter, uh, Steel Toe OSS, and find uh, the team there. Uh, you can look for me, Dear F. David, <coughs> on Twitter, uh, and I will hopefully point you in the right direction. All right. You guys still out there? Woohoo. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hi. That was a lot. It was a lot. Normally, Paul gives a clapping so uh, sound from his computer. <laughs> but I don't know what's going on. All right, right so this wasn't game. to the scale of clapping. <laughs> no, no, oh, no. Okay. No, what I'm, what I'm saying is I think his computer uh, is, is having all the technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So the, the clapping and stuff wouldn't make it to the Zoom call, so it would be a bit... <laughs> hey, do you want to unshare your screen, David? I sure would. Yeah, uh, this this is all great, and I think I think the biggest. Oh, thing... where's your face? Oh, right. Sorry, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, oh no, put it away again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What have I done? Um, yeah, the, no. The, uh, I think the biggest thing uh, that I know you're aware of is just getting it out there, getting getting the word out that this is a project that uh, is really enhancing the .NET community. Uh, for me. Um, I remember how exciting it was when it was announced at uh, Spring One Platform. It was in San Francisco, I believe, was the one. So that was 2017, 2018, when they were like, when they announced it, when they like said this was happening. Um, uh, well, it, it began in 2015. Uh, that's when the development started. 17, 2017, we, we donated it to the... That's right, when it was donated to the... To the that's what I was talking about. That's what it was. Um, and so, yeah, it's just been kind of growing and building ever since. And and just that idea of like, hey, all the things for Spring Boot, we love that. We wish we that for .NET. And so it's... An, and it's, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's so much goodness happening over there. Uh, <clears throat> the honest truth is, you know, the, the Spring Framework, um, Spring Boot and uh, um, Spring... Conf uh, uh, Spring Cloud, um, those are years ahead of .NET or .NET Core, right? That's that's just life. Right. They, they uh, started earlier, and, that's and so they're they're. We need to learn from this. We need to benefit from this. We need to skip ahead, right? And the Steel Toe team and the Spring team literally sit, well, virtually next to one another. Uh, they strategically roll up to the same uh, person. So <clears throat> following the same path, knowing what everybody's working on, uh, you know, staying in tune there, uh, it's just been so invaluable mm -hmm. having those two together. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Spring Cloud is, uh, is a great thing. Well, and I think there's just this big push. I mean, the Java on Azure and, you know, adding Java-like features to .NET, you know, it's like everybody's saying, look, clearly there's some great pluses to both of these and particularly you know with with the dot net community going like how can we harness and maximize um this for our developers because you know you hear about java of course is i think 60 percent in the enterprise you know so it's it's a it's a monster it's been out there for a long time but there's a lot of dot net shops out there you know and i know ford for pivotal when 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 ford that they were a huge dot net shop and that was one of the big pushing factors i'm like, there yes and then, you know, but I, I try to be, you know, real about these things. And uh, in the not so distant past, uh, not so recent past, um, .NET was not that great, right? Framework, I mean, I've, I've been in C Sharp and all that for longer than I'm going to admit, but it really just kind of got boring. It's because you're a, a vampire, right? You don't want to admit how old you are because you're a vampire. Possibly. Okay. I just Possibly. wanted to, I just, oh, sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but uh, Donna Core came out, you know, Microsoft is slowly embracing open source ish kind of stuff. Uh, that on the foundation was spun up, you know, there, there are a lot of efforts here and uh, I'm these days I'm spending a lot of time with uh, .NET 5, uh, which has gone through a few previews and, and all that. And is soon to be a thing that, the point of view that they've taken with .NET 5 about bringing all of everything together, mobile, console, um, ASP.NET, uh, microservices, uh, all of these things, if you ever heard of Xamarin, 
uh, or mono or all of these things were good, but they were all kind of their own deal. They're bringing them all together in .NET 5. They're going to be one huge namespace, uh, but they're building it out so you can create microservices and console apps that are as performant as the most basic Java app, because that's something that we've not had before uh, to be that performant uh, or a Go app or whatever, right? A uh, couple of K for an application and is respondent in thousands of a millisecond uh, kind of thing. Uh, and they're giving that to us. And it's opening up just crazy, crazy doors for us. It's a, it's a very fun time right now uh, for, the, for C Sharp and .NET. Well, uh, you, you mentioned yeah, uh, you use NuGet to download it. Is NuGet like a package manager for Windows? It, I'm not familiar. It is. Uh, that would be your um, uh, Maven or your uh, uh, that sort of thing. It, NuGet is our this is a .NET version. Uh, okay. That's our package distribution. Mm -hmm. I learned lots of new stuff, so that was cool. Well, that is cool. Yes. No, um, so we're where the, the .NET community is learning about containers, is learning about microservices, learning about uh, getting the most out of cloud, and we're all getting a little bit better each day. Well, Speaking yeah, and containers. I, yeah, go ahead. Um, like Windows containers are something they've been promising for uh, quite some time now that mm -hmm. have never really seemed to fully appear, at, at least in like something you would run in production. Um, but I think, with .NET Core, you can run a lot of the stuff on Linux anyway, right? So is Steel Toe yeah. able to run on the .NET Core on Linux on Kubernetes without too many hiccups? Yeah, so .NET Core, its primary uh, um, OS would be Linux. You're, oh, okay. Honestly, you're going to have to justify yourself if you want to run .NET Core on Windows. You can, no. uh, but you're really going to have to justify yourself uh, for doing that. Uh, you need to be running that on Linux. Uh, in fact, my desktop, I run uh, the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, mm -hmm. and I'm in Visual Studio on my Windows desktop, but all of my develop is running on Ubuntu. Uh, oh, wow. Everything I do okay. is, on, is on Ubuntu. That's where I intend to run everything that I develop. Uh, that's so, you know, using the Docker side of things, using uh, uh, whatever, run C, container D, all of those things that, that are, you know, normal there, 100%, that's what .NET Core runs on. Uh, the Windows side of thing, um, so that's your legacy .NET now. That would be .NET Framework uh, because .NET Framework cannot run on Linux. But any developer in their right mind in the past year, yeah, I might give you six months, um, you are not writing any, do, any uh, new .NET Framework stuff. You are only developing new stuff in .NET Core, and you are maintaining your framework. Um, so because of that, and because Microsoft is very much going in direction of Linux uh, for their app servers and such, um, the Windows containers are, um, I, I'm going to say, I, I'm tempted to say stopgap, I'll say Band-Aid. That probably just offended quite a few people. But the honest <laughs> truth is, like, they're not going to build this out. They didn't build a container orchestrator in Windows for a reason. They just use Docker because uh, they're not going to build this out. They're not going to build Windows Server out. Uh, uh, and it's, you know, it's containerization and all that. It's just, it ain't going to happen. It's just here to get your .NET Framework apps in a container running in the cloud. We can do that. Uh, and in fact, on, uh, on Tenzu Application Services, we have TAS for Windows. Uh, and so that... Uh, addition to the platform, you can run Windows Diego-based workers and containerize your .NET Framework apps. Seal Toad plays very nicely with all of that. Um, but there are some uh, limitations about you don't have a GAC, you don't have a uh, uh, registry, uh, you don't have a local disk. So we've got to give and take. We've got to learn about that. Uh, Tanzu, or, uh, um, Tanzu Kubernetes service uh, is going to actually go GA with their Windows workers. Uh, so that is Windows workers on Kubernetes. It feels like a very unnatural thing. Um, but Windows workers in Kubernetes, uh, yeah, not a very common conversation at all. It's a thing you can run. I've definitely played around with it. I've definitely done it. Um, 
I'm actually thinking of one customer that I believe has gone to production, a pretty sizable customer that has gone to production with Windows workers. But again, it's, it's a stopgap, right? You're moving on. You've got to move over to Linux. You've got to move over to .NET Core. But the Windows workers will at least buy you some time uh, to get there. Yeah, okay. And I'm thinking with Project Pacific and a lot of the other stuff VMware is doing with Kubernetes, it may end up making sense to be running your Windows workloads as VMs fronted by the Kubernetes API instead of trying to you know, force yeah. the container issue. So I think there's a few avenues that are just fairly recently opening up that may absolutely make Windows containers like a moot point. The, the like, when I, when I discovered this, this kind of blew my mind. And this is just one little piece of Windows containers. Uh, but it, in my opinion, it's kind of a big one. Traditionally, you would install a version of .NET on Windows. And then IIS is your web server. And all of your applications running on that server have to be conformant to that version of .NET, right? That becomes massively painful if you have three or four enterprise teams using the same servers, they all have to stay on the same version. That's painful. Uh, <clears throat> containerization, Windows containers, uh, remove that. So in fact, the, the, the worker, the host, whatever you want to call it, that's Windows, base Windows with containerization turned on, that's it. No IAS, no .NET literally are not installed. And then when you build the container, uh, you build the image of the container, that's where you define your .NET runtime and your version. So on the same host, you can have different versions of .NET framework running side by side. That was like totally mind blowing for me. Uh, the first time I saw that, because my whole life has been has been hinged around a single .NET version on a single IES. <laughs> uh, so when they did that, that was kind of cool. Cool. All right, you guys learned something about Windows. You probably weren't prepared for that. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I'm just uh, I, I'm I'm just sitting back and enjoying listening to your depth of knowledge in all this. Um, I mean, uh, this channel and, you know, a lot of our time is, is spent on spring and, you know, I understand why and it's great, but it's also just really nice to get this other take on uh, .NET and kind of how we're helping uh, enterprise companies uh, attack the, you know, modern application uh, building problems. So, you know, and it, and so I have to, I, I got to just say that, um, you're right, there is a heck of a lot of spring uh, out there and a heck of a lot of spring being talked about. The funny thing is, a lot of the concepts are exactly the same. It doesn't matter what runtime you're using, right? Just best practices about containerization and cloudy stuff and, and you know, whatever. You wanna get into CF push or you wanna get into all the tans of goodness. All of that stuff is the exact same. But the funny thing is like when I show maybe a, a, a Java coworker that has never seen C-sharp before. I show them how I would do that. And they're like, well, that's how I do it. It's just <laughs> a different name. Yeah. Right. And then you show a uh, .NET developer, like go get versions of these packages. And they look at you like versions of packages. Okay, go to Visual Studio, open up the NuGet window and go find this thing. That is a version of a package. That is packet package distribution. And they're like, Whoa. that's that's Maven, that's Gradle. That's all of those things that they, you hear Java people talk about. We do the exact same thing over here. There, there are so many similarities uh, between the two uh, and all the concepts. And that's, I, I, I get checked by that all the time. Like, oh, well, that's how they do that. It's just a different name. <laughs> right. Oh. Well, and I think that's also, you know, you live in that world, right? And there's people that still clearly don't. And so it's just nice to be able to go uh, kind of keep refreshing that like, oh, right. I need to keep letting people know that this is out there. for Because yeah. yeah, we take it for granted now, right? We're just, we're yeah. already in the future, whatever you want to, you know, call it. And so it's, it's like, let's, let's bring them along. And, and we have a lot, there's just a lot, I mean, I'm sure people might be watching this and they go, yeah, we're not even close to any of that. And yeah. how do I get there? You know, and, and those are some really common cultural, uh, you know, issues that, that we deal with and, and companies deal with. And so, um, so yeah, it's, it's always like humbling to be reminded, like, yep, like 
we're doing this and trying to push the edge of it, but there's a lot to, of people to bring up to it. And so, so it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, I, I don't have any more questions. Uh, I'm really thankful to you. Let's just check this, see how we're doing on our Twitch channel. Yep. Everybody's, awesome. everybody's good. Just listening. It's good. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, and I have, uh, I have quite a few other .netters around uh, the Tanzu uh, workspace. Uh, so you guys want to come back and rap about something or just get somebody other than me evangelizing about it? <laughs> no, I mean, it's, yeah, that's great. We we definitely, yeah, we can, we can get somebody else on and have them bring a different, different stuff to talk about. So we'll, we'll, keep, we'll the, keep pushing. The, actually, a, you know, really, I think a really cool topic for the audience Excuse might be me. The, uh, uh, the, the modernization piece. Um, like that is, we spend a heck of a lot of time with a heck of a lot of customers. Like, okay, we've got all this framework stuff. We've got all this .NET framework stuff. Everybody knows you can't continue on with that. What are we going to do? Like this accounts for 40% of our revenue right now. I can't touch this app. What am I going to do? Um, we've got a couple of folks that have been doing that for years in Pivotal Labs. Uh, and would be, uh, they're just vast knowledge. And uh, yeah, we should definitely bring them on and uh, talk about that modernization story. Sure. Yeah, especially, like we have this every week. So like having more new speakers would, is always awesome and new topics and everything. Awesome. Maybe we could get a, uh, a, a one of our spring team and then one of our steel toe team and uh, Put their screens up side by side and yeah, have a race. Head to head. <laughs> like race to write an app and then deploy it to Kubernetes. That would be great. Oh, I can hear oh, the banjos fun. playing right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. All right. Well, uh, once again, David, thank you so much. We certainly learned a lot. I hope everybody else out there learned. If you, uh, you know, you want to catch up on any of our other, uh, come to Tanzu.twitch or tv. sorry, and check out all our other talks. And this one will be posted up soon. And so, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank Spencer you. says, as long as Josh Long is typing for spring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got a champion put forward. <laughs> all right, wonderful. Good. Oh, I just played your laughter track for your joke there, but you didn't hear it. So uh, I, think, I think the folks on the Twitch heard it. So okay, good. <laughs> all right. All right. Everyone. Uh,